All right, team, let's talk timeline. There are a lot of trials and cases and stuff upcoming for Donald Trump, and so we want to make sure we're on top of everything. And man, this stuff is just hard to keep track of. So I thought I'd help you out. First things first, E. Jean Carroll is not done with Donald Trump. The problem for Donald Trump is Donald Trump. He can't shut his mouth. Carol, too, is the battery and defamation case that he was just found liable for, where he now owes her $5 million. That is being appealed. In the meantime, there was also Carol 1. And Carol 1 was when he was defaming her while he was president. And the courts couldn't decide if he could be sued for that. And eventually it was kicked back to Judge Kaplan. And they were like, yeah, you know, let's see how what happens in Carol 2. And then we'll sort of base Carol 1 on that. So that defamation case is still happening. But also, he can't shut up. He continues to defame her. So they're kicking around the idea of an additional defamation case for all of the stuff he said since, including his, you know, pep rally that CNN hosted. For the criminal cases, we'll go roughly in chronological order um, as best we can. Like I said, it's hard to keep track. Uh, let's start with the Manhattan criminal case against him brought by District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Uh, this trial is going to be in front of Judge Juan Marchand, uh, unless it's moved to the federal courts, which it probably won't be, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is the Stormy Daniels case. This is, it's not illegal to pay hush money. Nobody cares about that. The problem was then he cooked the books. He falsified business records uh, 34 times, probably way more than that, but for sure, 34 times. Shout out to Michael Cohen a key witness in this case. The Manhattan criminal case technically goes as uh, on December 4th, there is a motions hearing where Judge Marchand will rule on a bunch of motions that will be being made during all this time. Uh, and the trial will start in February or March. But Trump has been called before the judge on May 23rd. He is being told to come in front of Judge Marchand. I think it's going to be on Zoom. And Judge Marchand is going to tell him all of the rules as far as what he is and is not allowed to talk about with this case. And this is great because now he can't say, oh, my lawyers didn't tell me or I didn't get it. Because he's going to be told by the judge, if you do these things, this is going to be a real problem for you. Um, this is the closest we're going to see, like, in the immediate future to maybe seeing him behind bars, because I don't think he's going to be able to handle a gag order. I'm sorry, this isn't a gag order. It's very close to a gag order, but, you know, he can't do it. Evidence Rules 101, May 23rd, December 4th, motions hearing, and then sometime in February or March, we'll have the actual trial. Now, Trump has moved to have this, uh, moved to a federal court, and all signs are that the federal court is going to say these are state crimes go away we're not going to deal with you um but we'll update as needed on that next up bonnie willis fulton county georgia this is a big one all right this is the fake elector scheme this is election interference these are rico charges bonnie willis loves her some rico charges so we're looking at that happening as she presents to the fourth session of the court, which happens between July 11th, let me show that, July 11th through September 1st. So she's going to be presenting to the grand jury there. Remember, the special grand jury has already heard everything. They've written up a report. She's going to give them the special grand jury's report and be like, oh my gosh, look at all this. And then by September, we are going to know who all is on the indictment, um, the indictment. We know for sure that there is one just based on things that she's dropped. She also sent a letter to the sheriff of Fulton County saying, um, so here's what's happening sometime before September, just so you know, and you can get prepared. Then October 2nd, 2023, we have Letitia James, New York attorney general. This is the tax fraud trial in New York. This is him inflating and deflating the values of his properties, um, basically just trying to get away with bloody financial murder. Uh, so that is going to trial to quote Judge Arthur Engeron, come hell or high water. I'm really excited for that. Ooh. Now let's take a second to talk about Jack Smith. Uh, Jack Smith's got a lot on his plate as far as investigations against Donald Trump. So uh, let's keep them all straight. We've got the January 6th 
insurrection investigation where they're looking into the Espionage Act and seditious conspiracy charges and um, did Trump cause that riot uh, and the attack of the Capitol and the attempt to overthrow democracy in the United States. Uh, we've also got the Mar-a-Lago documents case, which should be wrapping up relatively quickly because they've got all sorts of evidence there. Three, obstruction of justice. He's trying as hard as he can to make sure that nobody is able to actually uh, get this stuff on the move, and that is through, four, lying, <laughs> lying to federal officials. Uh, and five, uh, Jack Smith looks like he's looking at foreign dealings now um, between specifically Trump and Saudi Arabia and his live uh, golf tournament deal, and this is all just sort of looking super, super shady because six, he may have been showing these classified documents to people, particular like foreign agents or just sort of people he wanted to impress. This is insane. I can't believe this is the real world. And that's just on the criminal side. On the civil side, he's got a lot to look forward to as well. Um, so just as far as January 6th, we've got 10 House Democrats that have filed a lawsuit against him claiming violations of the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act love it. Eric Swalwell, um, Representative Swalwell, is also suing Donald Trump separately for a conspiracy just in general of uh, January 6th. Uh, two Capitol Police officers are suing Trump for inciting the riot and causing their injuries, both physical and mental. Uh, another group of Capitol Police officers are suing for the instigation of the attack. Um, a third Capitol Police suit is by another officer that Trump directed, aided, and abetted, and conspired to incite the riot. Uh, two Metro police officers are also suing Donald Trump for January 6th. And the NAACP is suing um, Donald Trump for efforts to overturn the 2020 elections based on the Voting Rights Act and the Ku Klux Klan Act. Um, also, there's a nonprofit group in Scotland that is looking into his golf course um, or one of his golf courses out there. And in January of next year, you've got uh, Doe et al. versus Trump Corp et al., which is basically a group of plaintiffs suing Donald Trump and his kids and the Trump Organization for racketeering and fraud, basically a RICO civil suit. I I need to look more into that. Um, if there are any cases specifically that you would like me to look more into and explain a little bit as far as I can tell, um, I just, I watch a lot of the Midas Touch Network. I listen to a lot of lawyers talk about this kind of thing. Uh, ben Micellis and Karen Freeman Agnefilo and uh, Michael Popak. And they're just like such great minds talking about these cases. Um, I'm also watching a lot of Brian T Tyler Cohen uh, lately. So, you know, please tune into him. Uh, Glenn Kirshner and Brian and Tyler Cohen do a great thing called the legal breakdown, which I really, really uh, enjoy. So there are lots of places to find this information, but I'm also already watching it. So if there's something you want me to look into, let me know and um, like and follow, and I will keep you as updated as I possibly can.